guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're doing Bible study Saturdays again. We have Brother Gio here. We don't have Brother Jave, but it's for a special reason. Today's his wedding day. So just shout out happy wedding day to him. When this video comes out, he's already gonna be married and him and Gio is a part of the club. Uh, I'll be a part of that club in like at least 10 years. Give me some fun. But with any further ado, uh, to start out this video, uh, I will pray and then to close over Brother Gio will pray and we're going to get into this. We're going to be doing um, John chapter 3 verses 1 all the way to verse 21 and then in the next video we'll do from 22 all the way to 36 and I will be starting to pray here. Father, we thank you for the day that you have made our rejoice in you, God, and God. I pray as me and Brother Gio come here to fellowship, God, we pray that we'll be able to learn something, God. We pray that we will to have a key understanding of this chapter, God. We pray that we'll be able to apply what we learn to, in this chapter to our lives, God. We pray that you'll reveal to us the message that you're trying to um, you're trying to let us get from the scripture, God. We love you and we thank you, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Just trying to remember the recap we left off of chapter two. Yeah, um, I got some notes for that. Um, yeah, we'll your notes from chapter two. We, we'll do we'll do it like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, the, one of the notes I got is the Bible never says, um, Jesus knew what God was saying. Um, Jesus turned uh water into wine, and he first performed his um work in Jerusalem. What was the uh, a spiritual takeaway that you had from it? Spiritual so takeaway from that? Uh, I'm, trying, I'm trying to remember. Right. If you if you didn't take a note of it, I think that's what I want you to. That's yeah. what I want us to um to work on from now on. You know what I mean? I want us to um do a breakdown of what's happening in the chapter just to get an understanding of it. And then how can we take something from this spiritually to apply to us so that we can work on our growth, right? Work on our faith, work on our trust in God. That's what the whole purpose of these things. These, the story is to help build our faith in God. Okay. So let's get right into it, right? Chapter three. So I'm in the King James. All right. So it says there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Um, in case you didn't know what a Pharisee is, simply put, think of them like the government. Like when they're like a high official, like like a like a governor or something like that. All right. Let me let me jot that down. Sure. What do you call it a Pharisee? That's a fancy word. Yeah, there's Pharisees and there's Sad Sadducees or Sadducees, but we'll we'll get to that word when we get there. But th that's pretty much like the government of 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 the Jewish people. I notice they call them Jews, right? And um, we'll we'll get to that because in the Old Testament they refer to them as the nation of Israel. So they they are more than like one name for them. Uh, now they're going from, so we got to find out when they transitioned from the nation of Israel to Jewish people or to Jews, right? So we'll look for that as we continue on in the journey. Uh, so you have Nicodemus, who's a ruler of the Jews, right? He's a Pharisee. And verse two says, the same came to Jesus by night. So Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night and Nicodemus says unto him, rabbi, which is like ruler, which is like teacher, right? Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher who comes from God. For no man can do these miracles that you do, except God be with him. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, 
and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, where, where it listeth, or where it, so pretty much saying the wind goes where it wants, and you hear the sound of it, but cannot tell where it came from and where it's going. So is every one that is born of the spirit. Nicodemus is like, what are you even talking about? <laughs> That's the same face Nicodemus had, right? Nicodemus answered and said, Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Like, dude, what are you even talking about, right? And Jesus answered and said unto him, art thou a master of Israel and knowest not these things? And so now Jesus is questioning, like, listen, aren't you supposed to be one of these high officials, like the governor of the Jews? Like, how come you don't know these things? And Jesus says, verily, verily, verse 11, verily, verily, I say unto thee, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things and you believe not, how shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that hath come down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the son of the only begotten. Uh, he had not believed on the Sorry, he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their, deep, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hate the light, and neither come to the light, lest his deeds should be shown. But he that doeth truth come to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, or may be made known, that they are wrought in God. So, I didn't know that um, with the whole John 3, 16 and 17, that God was talking to Nicodemus. I did not know that. Ooh, I gotta write that down. I don't even know that. Yeah. <clears throat> so, so I thought it was like I thought it was like he was talking to like a whole crowd of people and saying like, "This is what the Bible says." Like. <laughs> I'm really talking like there are a whole crowd of people because I never really like went in depth with like the whole John chapter three. I only I paid attention to those two scriptures and I didn't care about anything. That's it. That's it. And so just just I'm glad you pointed that out. So as you write your notes, just just keep an air what I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. Um, first thing is I want you to always remember this. If I if I ne if you never remember anything else about the Bible, whenever you hear one portion of the scripture of the Bible always go back and read the entire scripture, that entire chapter. So if somebody just pulls out John 3, 16, it's good that you go read John 1 through 15, and then John, um, and then read verses, I mean, read verses 1 through 15, so that you can understand what's happening before you get to verse 16, and then find out what's happening after 16, right? That's just always, you always want to look at the, the big picture. Because sometimes people pull stuff out of the Bible, just one verse of a, of a chapter, and they just, they isolate it, or they, 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 they don't let you know the full contents in order for you to get the, the full picture, okay? So just always remember that. Um, you got Jesus talking to Nicodemus. Powerful conversation. Powerful conversation, right? Notice that Jesus doesn't like just go and say, oh, okay, so what I mean is you have to do this, you have to do that. Uh, he didn't give him like a clear, concise answer, according to Nicodemus. Yeah. But according to Jesus, he gave him a clear, concise answer. Because the way Jesus answered questions is he doesn't hit it from the surface level. He goes down to the root of the problem. 
so let's go to Nicodemus's question, right? His first question says, first he's like, all right, listen. So you're the rabbi, and and I'm sure of this because the only way you you you're, you're the rabbi is because of the things that you're able to do, the miracles that you're able to pull off. That it's evident that God is with you, right? And and so so look. He didn't even, you know what? I just realized Nicodemus didn't, Nicodemus didn't ask a question. Look at it. Look, look at verse two. It says, it says, so the same meaning, meaning Nicodemus, Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher that comes from God. For no man can do these miracles that do us except, so he's like, yo, listen, you're a teacher that comes from God. Because it, you know, God is with you based off the miracles that you do. Look at Jesus answering a question that was never even asked in verse 3. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Maybe he was never like, like, in, like, asking a question, but like, you know, like, he probably was thought of it in his head or something. So or, I think, uh -huh. Or Jesus probably knew like the the type of question people would ask because because like he don't give you like a like a like um a plain answer where like you can understand it. See, the reason why is because Jesus doesn't answer. Let me give you an example. This is this is how Jesus works, right? Prime example. You have these friends, right, that come up to you and be like. They just disappear. You know how you tell me about your friends. They just stop talking to you for whatever reason, and you don't know why. And you try to reach out to them and this, that, and like, yo, why are you not? Like, why are you treating me like this? And you've done nothing wrong. For whatever reason, they have their own issues. This is how Jesus would approach the question, would, would approach the problem. He won't come to the to your friend. Like I say, you're Jesus, right? Jesus, you you won't approach your friend like, yo, what's the matter? Why are you? Jesus would be like, you have insecurities something and your family is bothering you right. seek me and i shall give you peace he won't like because he, he's going to the root of the problem he's addressing what's actually causing a pimple there's a whole bunch of stuff happening underneath your skin before the pimple comes out until you see it and for us we're trying to just pop the pimple, get rid of just the surface layer. But what really, needs to re what really needs to be happening is we need to get underneath the skin, dig out everything that's, that formed that pimple so that that pimple no longer forms again. And that's what Jesus does. He goes down to the heart, to the deep parts of what the inner depths of the inside of the man to address that. Nicodemus didn't even ask the question. And right off the bat, Jesus is trying to tell him how to get to the kingdom of God. So he understands that Nicodemus is like, 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 and I want you to picture Nicodemus's uh, position. He's he's up there in the rankings. He's like one of the high officials. He's a he's like a guess, let's call him a governor, you know, or, or a mayor, right? Or or and he's like, truly, you're a teacher, you know, you're a rabbi because you know of the things that you do with God, the miracles you do, and. Jesus is like, are you really trying to big me up right now? Or are you trying to play me? Are you trying to question my authority? I got something for you. Let me answer this question this way. A man cannot enter into the kingdom of God until he be born again. Jesus is saying to Nicodemus, all the rules and laws and regulations that you follow as a Jewish man, you can know them like the back of your hand. But those things won't get you into the kingdom of God. Those things won't get you access to God. Those are just like check, like a checklist, things that you do every day as a ritual, right? That's called religion. Jesus is talking about a relationship, which is different. Religious is I pray three times a day. I, I kneel to the sun and I look at the sun and I, I pray to the sun. Um, uh, I, I, I fast one time a year for uh, a certain amount of time. I, I, it's like it's like I kneel down. I say I say twelve Hail Marys. Um, like that's religion. 
relationship is when you walk with God. It's when you talk with God. It's when you're really born again. And not of the flesh, meaning that you don't go back into your mother and come out another and come out as a baby, but you're born of the spirit, meaning that the spirit now has come inside of you. The spirit now dwells in you and you allow access to the spirit, right? You allow access for the spirit to come inside of you. And now it's like it's like you were walking like this when you were in the flesh, when you were following the world, right? This is considered uh Geo and Ezra on BC, right? Before we met Christ. And then when, when we allow, when we hear God calling, we walk up to the altar, let's say we're in church or we listen to a video or whatever, we're in our house, homes or in a car. And then all of a sudden the spirit hits. And then these blinders begin to come off your face. And then all of a sudden, it's like you look at the world differently. It comes like a baby, like, a baby looks to pick stuff up and put it in his or her mouth. But when a baby becomes an adult and matures, it's only food and, and beverage that's, beverages that they're looking to put in their mouths because they've grown. The blinders are taking off. And now they're born of the spirit. So Jesus is telling me, telling, like, yo, listen, I know you a high official, you're a governor and all that good stuff of the Jews, but that stuff's not going to work to get you inside. What has to happen is you have to be, you have to have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of you. So that's what he's talking about in verse three. And then we go on and Nicodemus is like, what? Bruh, what you talking about? You tripping. <laughs> he's like, you, like, I'm old, my old man. Like, how am I going to be born again? That's what he's saying in verse four. Like, should I go back into my mother's womb? And in verse five, Jesus says, Listen, this is what I'm saying to you. Except a man be born of water. We know what he means by water, right? Baptism. Yeah. In the water, right? And the, of the spirit, meaning that you've been baptized by the spirit after you've been baptized with water, you cannot accept, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So that's very important for Christians. I don't think we teach this um, often, right? Or well enough that you need both baptism of water and spirit to enter into the kingdom of God. I didn't make that up. Yeah, we write the scripture. We, yeah, we don't. All right. <laughs> uh, you always you always hear about the baptism part. You, it's like it's like this. Get saved, baptized, and just kind of live the best life you could live. Yeah, we don't really we don't really coach and mentor after that. And no. that's, that's the key. And that's the reason why we lose a lot of Christians and they become lukewarm. They become one, one foot in the water, one foot out. Or I'm, I'm a sort of kind of be Christian-like-ish, something like that. Like, I believe, but, you know, I'm not, like, I don't go to church. Like, I don't, and, you know, not to say you have to go to church to be a Christian, but, you know, the Bible encourages us to go to church to strengthen each other, right? So it's just like, this is the reason. We're not mentoring and coaching each other and, and really – making disciples of each other. Like a disciple is a student, like you're learning of Christ. You're following Christ. So he says in verse six, Jesus, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. He's, he's, he's drawing the line. He's making a clear distinction between the two. He says, marvel not that I said unto thee, you must be born again. He said, don't listen, don't, don't, don't get so caught up on the be born again. Like, like you got to go and, and, and go in your mother's womb and come out again. Right. He says, that's, that's not, not the, huh? That's not painful. Yeah, it does. <laughs> he's like, listen, don't focus on that part. Right. Cause he's saying, look, look, look. And then he, and he hits him with this. It's crazy. I don't know what you call it, like like a a, a a mind twister or whatever. He says, it "says the wind bloweth where it goes, like the wind goes where it wants. You hear it, but you don't know where it came from and where it's going. And so is everyone that is born of the spirit." What what do you think he's saying in that? Yeah. 
it's like Jesus would be like a whole rapper out here. Like he's just oh, like it's it's crazy. <laughs> laying tracks, right? Like I'm thinking to me, I'm thinking he mean like because we're all born of the flesh. We're, we could sway each way. We could sway whatever way. Um, like, like whatever way. Uh, we choose to some something like that. That's fine. So, being born of the spirit, right? So, he's talking about accepting Christ into your life, and 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 as a result, there's a shift, there's a change. It's like a one eighty. You you're like a brand new person. But understand that you don't just stop being the old you right away. Yeah. Just like when you're a baby, you don't come out of your mother dancing. You know what I mean? Just hey. <laughs> you don't come out your mother like that, right? You have to first drink milk. She has to nurse you. You have to develop from drinking milk. Then you go grow teeth. Then you crawl. And then you start to eat meat. And then you walk and so forth. There's a process. And I want Christians to understand that being a Christian is a lifestyle. It's not something you do on Sundays. It's something you live. It's something who you are. Oh, nah. Hold on. Say that again. Say that again. The Sunday part. Say that again. (laughs) Being a Christian is a lifestyle. It's not something you just do on a Sunday. It's who you are. It's what you do. It's 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 everything about you, right? Being Christian is 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 is, is because you believe in God that you you know and believe on His word that wherever you go, He's with you. He will follow you. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He's forever by your side. And because of that, everything you do, you can filter through God. God, I want to make a video to impact the world. Give me guidance and direction on what I should do. Yeah, I have this idea, but I want you to confirm that this is what you want me to do. Oh, God, I want to put this video out into the world. Let me know exactly what platform to put it on, what time to post it. Be specific, Lord, oh Lord, because all I want to do is for you to get the glory. Yeah, this is a great idea in my mind, but I want to make sure that this, this is in line with your will. And as you develop your relationship with God, you will not... Uh, you will not put God in a box and limit him to what you can bring to him. Your box expands until it just, it disappears. And he's like, you know what, God, I want to talk to you about, I want to talk to you about this girl that I like. Uh, I, I want to talk to you about, if for ladies watching, I want to talk to you about this boy that I like. I, you know, I want to talk to you about my grades. I want to talk to you about my mom, my dad. I want to talk to you about my career, um, what school I want to go to. Um, you know, God, I have this test. I'm asking you to help me develop the knowledge that I need to pass. Like, you could talk to God about anything. And 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 the reason and how that becomes easy is the more time you spend with him. Just like, yo, that's wrong. You call me up, yo, G. I got to talk to you about something personal, bro. And the only reason why you're capable of doing that is because of the time that we spend with each other. You develop a relationship with me so you feel comfortable. And it's the same thing with God. The more time you spend with God, the easier it is to have that conversation. Let Christianity be a lifestyle, bro. Not just something you do on Sunday. Uh, that's that's something like I, I, I had to work on. Because like, back in like, I say 12, 16, 17? Yeah. That's like, that's like the two years I was going crazy. And... <laughs> Not, and when I say crazy, I literally mean I was going crazy. Not like crazy as in psycho, but like crazy as in like I was doing too much. Um, And, uh, you know, I was coming to church on Sunday, you know, all of my crazy stuff. But I was a whole other person when I loved it. And that's something I had to realize, like, nah, I can't just do this on Sunday. Like, I got to do this through the, through the week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good thing I made that because that led to me just changing a bunch of the stuff I did and just calming myself down. Still be, still be like a little bit of the yeah, but but like I had to really like calm it down because I was I was doing too much. I was doing I was doing too much. I want you to notice this, bro. First off, anybody listening out there, um, don't beat yourself up. Like I just said, a baby does not come out of his or her mom and they start off running. It, it, it's a process. So in 2016, 17, like you said, you was wilding. That's because you didn't know any better. 
But now you look back at it because you know better, and you're like, yo, I was wilding. But when you was wilding, you didn't think he was wilding. He thought that was a way to do it. Just like a baby think it's okay to pick everything up and put it in his or her mouth. You have to develop. And that's why I'm trying to tell you it's a, it's a lifestyle. It's a, it's a process. And so imagine what you're going to look like, what you're going to talk like, how you're going to think, your actions five years from now. I'm tell you, I'm gonna be way more talkative than now. Y'all gonna be annoyed by the way I talk. I'm telling y'all. As, as long as you talking facts, man, I don't care. Talking to me, I don't care. Talking talk, I don't care. As long as you're speaking up with facts, I'm good, man. Yeah. But, but that's what Jesus is saying, man. I would honestly, I would have know. Next five years, I'll say, wait, I'll be in my, yeah, I think third or fourth year of college. No, yeah. four, four, yeah, four. I just feel like that four year of college. Your whole grown man, big things, yeah. big things. All right, I was, I was start a whole uh, camp, campus crusades for Christ at your at your campus, man. You might start the whole Jesus movement. You never know. Listen, whatever God leads you to, bro. Just like like we learned about Gideon, right? From fear to faith. Just say yes. He got you. I'll do that. Because even though, like, I be scared to do some stuff sometimes, I just be like, God, if you want me to do it, I got no problem with it. Because I, I always, that's some, something I do is, like, I think, I don't think about how my feelings towards it. Because sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be bad. I just think about, like, God's going to have some type of purpose to this. This is going to impact somebody. It's, it's going to, good is going to come out of it. I don't know it, but I know you just got to, you got to trust. You just got to trust God. Once yeah. you trust God, like, you'll always be open to whenever he says something. That's it. That's it. I'm, I'm going to make this one last comment, and then we're going to go right back to the scripture. So you talk about trust, right? And in faith, right? You have five senses, right? Taste, touch, smell, hear, and feel. Guess what the sixth sense is? Wait, wait, wait. I know this. No, I know this. I know this because no, no, no. Hold on. I'm not a trick question, bro. I just gave it away. I just told you what it was. Faith. Faith, yeah, faith. Faith is outside of your human abilities. Faith is bigger than you. Faith is something that God specifically put outside of what you're capable of doing on your own because he wants you to rely on him. I like to call faith the sixth sense. Well, I'm writing that down in case you didn't know. Yeah, no, I know, I know, I know. Like, how many chairs have you sat, in, sat on in your life? Can't even count, right? But you have faith in the person who made that chair to sit down. You didn't even think twice about it. And you, you don't even know homeboy that made the chair, but you yeah, sit but, down in the chair. <laughs> but sometimes that faith ended badly. Cause I, <laughs> nah, because I think everybody was sat on some chair, and either you felt like that chair broke. I think that's happened to everybody. Right, but you know what's so crazy? I'm glad you said that, because even though that one or two, three times, maybe three times that that chair fell or broke, guess what? You still sat in the chair the next opportunity that you got. Or even better, you got up from that chair and got into another chair and sat down right after that. No. <laughs> Talk about that. Come on, man. So so when so things don't go right with you when you got your faith in God, keep trusting. Keep trusting him. So that, that's my little piece. All right. Um so after he talks about how the spirit goes and comes, right? He talks about Nick in verse, verse nine, Nicodemus says unto him, All right, listen, how can these things be? Jesus, you're talking about flesh, you're talking about spirit, you're talking about water, you're talking about the spirit going and coming as it pleases and, and talk to me. What, what are you saying? So Jesus really like now he, so now he has Nicodemus' air, right? And he, he just really goes, he goes a little bit level, like he's like peeling back the layers of an onion. Like now he's going to the next level. He's like, all right. He says, aren't you a master of Israel and know, and you don't know these things? Right? He's like, you're a teacher. Like, you, you're supposed to know these things. Like, so now he's, now he's, like, he's G checking him. Like, yo, listen, as big as you thought you was, when you try to come for me, when you said what you said to me in verse two, now I'm coming back for you. 
because you try to play me. So now I'm trying to check you. Yo, ain't you a teacher of um, the Jews? You're supposed to know this, what I'm talking about. And he says, verily, verily, in verse 11, I say unto you, we speak that we do know and testify that we have seen and you receive not our witness. So he's saying to Nicodemus, listen, I'm telling you the truth. What I'm saying to you is the truth. But for some reason, you're not ready to accept the truth because you're stuck in your old ways. This is the reason why a lot of the Jews did not accept Christ. Right? One of the main reasons is um, it's taught, but anyway, is that they didn't accept Jew, uh, Jesus Christ because they felt like he was going to be, he's going to come in on, on come in as royalty. He's going to come in as this big shot and everybody was going to bow down to him immediately. And, and, and Jesus chose to come in as humbly as he possibly could. Jesus was pretty much a baby born into poverty. Right. And, and, um, I think that's like the best way for him to do it. Cause like, cause like if you if you came in with that grand entrance, I'll be like, you probably doing like you doing too much. Like you doing too much. <laughs> yeah, and it was and it was so crazy because he had to like so it was twofold, right? He came in that way to be able to reach the poor, the sick, those were broken, those were without, those were those that were without, right? And you would think that the people who were up here would be able to come down and, and meet him, meet find Jesus where he was down here. But they were so stuck, stuck on their high horse that they couldn't come down and see Jesus where he was. Meantime, Jesus is meeting people where they were so that they can bring so that he can bring them up to where he is. And it was just they just couldn't fathom it. And so he's like, yo, I'm telling you, we speak of the truth, right? Wait, I'm telling you the truth. And he says, if I have told you earthly things and you don't believe me, how is it that if I tell you heavenly things, you're supposed to believe me? No man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, the son of man, which is in heaven. So now Jesus is talking about himself. And, and then he goes on to talk about Moses. He says in verse 14, and Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Even so, must the Son of Man be lifted up. So he talks about when Moses lifted up the staff, when they were running from, from Pharaoh and his, and his posse, um, when they were trying to um, kill them for, for escaping Egypt. And Moses, God told Moses to hold up the staff, and the Red Sea parted, and the children of Israel went through the Red Sea. That Back then, that was um, symbolic of their, bat, their water baptism. They went through the water. We'll get into that later on, right? So that was there. That was Israel's form. That was Israel's baptism. They went through the water, um, and then the water closes behind and kills and drowns every um, Pharaoh and his people. But he says, even as the serpent was lifted up in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Son of Man is another term um, that they refer to as Jesus. And so God is saying that. Jesus is saying that I will be lifted up in all the earth. Everybody will bow down before me. If they don't do it now while I'm giving them a chance to, when I come back, you better believe it. They will be bowing down to me. Okay? And he says that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. So are you telling me I'm not going to die? I won't live forever? That don't make sense, God. But he's talking about life in the spirit. When this, when this right here, this when this skin, when this body, when this vessel is expires, like everything else with it has an expiration date, the spirit that lives inside of us still has to go somewhere. You choose where you want to go. You want to go that way, or you want to go that way. <laughs> you choose which way you want to go, because wherever you go, just understand. He says eternal life, eternal. There's no time on eternal. God, God, God sits outside of time and he created time for us. So he's just looking down at time. This is God looking at time. And so God said, you're going to come out of time and spend eternally with me. Spend your eternal life with me. 
And it says, but you have to believe in him first. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. That's what it means to be saved. When people ask you, are you saved? You want to say yes? Why? Because I believe that God gave his only begotten son, his only son, one and only son that he had to die for my sins. And that God lifted him up and now he sits, he sits in heaven with God. That's what it means to be saved, right? To accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It says, verse 17, God sent he did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, right? To like come down and start slapping people up and, and, and killing people. He didn't send God, Jesus into the world for that, right? He sent Jesus into the world that through him, the world might be saved simply by believing in him. And should you decide to believe in Christ, then that means eventually you're going to start to follow Christ. You're going to start to be obedient to Christ, right? It's a process. So it's not okay just to stop at, oh yeah, I believe, I believe you, I believe in God, I believe in God, you know? And then next thing you know, I mean, you're out here, you having sex, you shooting, killing people, you cursing at your mother and your father, you you turning up on Saturday, you go to church on Sunday, like, it's, it's more than just believing, there's levels to it. Like I said, again, I'll keep going back to the baby, uh, the baby example, you have to grow from being a baby in Christ to being more spiritually mature in Christ, right? Um, verse 18 says, he that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is already condemned because he that not, he has not believed in the name of the only begotten son. So those people who decide not to believe in God, their fate is already chosen for them. They, they, they just, I, I, and it was so crazy. Like I believe everything in the Bible, and I, I know I like some things are more challenging for me to accept. For example, that not everybody's going to believe in God, and I get like every time I think about, it, like I start to tear up because if only they knew like what they're setting themselves up for, man. And especially like when I think about my family and like close friends, and I'm just like, please, please accept Christ, and and I realize that. I can't force them to do it. I can just simply pray, right? God tells us to plant the seed, water the seed, and then allow him to do the increase. So I'm just, I pray for them. And I just hope that the lifestyle that I live looks so entertaining and so exciting and, and so fulfilling that, that they too would want to live this life and get to know Jesus Christ for themselves. And, and, and I think that's, that's the position that I'm in right now. I'm not going to, yell at you and scream at you and drag you to church and bring you into Bible study. I'm, I'm just going to live my life and just pray that because of the life that I live, you see how great it is. I'm not saying I'm not going to go through things and I'm not saying that I'm not going to experience hardships, but I want them to see how I'm going through the hardship because I know I have Jesus with me. I experience that hardship a little bit different than they would. Right. I react to that or respond to that hardship a little bit different than they would, right? And sometimes it's easier to throw a hardship in your life just for you to, you know, reunite with him, just just for you to rely on him and understand that, listen, you, you're not in control. I need you to come back to me. You know, it's, what are you gonna say? Nah, so ooh, thinking of that, honestly, last year, that situation I told you about. Yeah. Yeah, honestly, to be honest with you, I think that's a good example of God doing that. Cause before that, I wasn't really in my I wasn't in my Bible like that. I was not praying like that. And when that situation happened, my mom was telling me all the time, pray, 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 pray. I would be like, nah, I'm not trying to do that. Like, <laughs> but I didn't even realize that. I didn't realize that. But honestly, I think I believe like that's what God was trying to do. Like to connect back with me because I rely on God more more than I did way before like that whole situation happened. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, sometimes situations will cause us to stray away from God, but it is in those situations that we really need to rely on the strength. When we are weak, we definitely need to seek the strength of God. Hands down. Right. Um, 
And in verse 19, he says, and this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil will hate the light and neither come to the light, lest his deeds should be shown. So <clears throat> my favorite example of like the dark and light situation, right? I think I think I think I told you one before. Yeah. So you you're in a party, right? And and the lights are out. You walk into the you walk into the party. You feeling the vibes, uh uh uh, right? You whining and you busting the ting, right? Like <laughs> you doing your thing or whatever. And then, like like right when you I get like yo, I'm talking about the the height of the party, like the, the, the they dropping the tunes, bro. And then the light come on. When, when I tell you everything stops, the music stops, people immediately stop dancing. And they're like, ah, they're like little roaches and da da. Ah, like they just try to, everybody scatter. Like dark and light don't mix. And the things that you do in dark, once they hit the light, it's like you just almost have, you just like, you immediately have to. No. stop and respond to the light man and, and that's what this thing is saying that's what this scripture is saying like these people love the dark they love the dark and they just for whatever reason don't want to come into the light I am the light Jesus says I'm the light come to me they just don't want to so they already condemned they chose their fate but here's the good news for us that believe in Christ verse 21 it says but he that doeth truth come to the light that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. So he that comes to the truth and the light, which is me, his deeds are shown in God. So listen, continue on, my brother. Continue in your walk. And um, and I think that God would truly bless us in the end. Yeah. I will, and don't worry. I always remember what you, Brother Jose, said. When you get big, Stay same stuff, cause I know that's gonna be hard. I know, I know that's gonna be hard. Stay humble, bro. Stay humble. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. I'm not gonna say I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna say I'm gonna try my best, cause I know, I know, I know it stuff can easily get like thing, but like I'm gonna make sure. I'm gonna, especially when the money start coming. In, bro. You gonna forget. Like, it's so easy to, to to get caught up. Like forget to tithe forget to um you know give and be generous like that's my money i earned this it, no mm -mm, really isn't especially the content that you're putting out that you're talking about god and people are paying you to talk about god and like for the life of me i'm trying to figure out like why wouldn't you want to give back like god's being so generous i'm definitely gonna give back you know what i mean so just like I'm gonna do that because, like, even when I had um, when I did some you last year, I gave 10% of each of my checks. And, and look, look at the blessing, bro. You, you got a brother that just blessed you to help you with your video. Yeah, oh, you know what? And then you go back, and it's like, listen, you know, I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna use that, that product anymore. Don't worry about it, bro. Put that in your pocket, keep the money to wait. And, I end up using it. I end up using it um, for the same thing I was going to use it for. Because with the editing software, Ian thing, so I don't know what was going on with it that day, but everything was just crashing with it. And he couldn't find something else. He was like, yo, you, you trying to think about what you're talking about? I was like, that's what I was literally trying to tell him the whole time, bro. Let me just, because I try to use it and I try to watch tutorials to how to use it. And it was, it was not making sense at all. And yeah. I was like, this, that's what I'm using. It makes perfect sense to me. Well, let's, let's just do it. So he was like, all right, fine. Let's just, let's just do it. Yeah, so definitely, bro. Like, like, like God is, He's going to hold you down, man. As long as you continue to draw closer to him, he, he definitely has. He says he'll come closer to you as you draw closer to him. He won't force himself onto you. and simply just, like, just tap you. Hey, I'm here. Remember me? <laughs> and it's up to you whether or not you didn't respond back to him, right? Um, but he just desires and yearns to be in a relationship with us. So, um, 
Now you learn something new, who Jesus was talking to when he was John 3.16, the famous scripture everybody talks about. He's talking to Nicodemus. I see. I wish that they would probably would have talked about, like, what led to this scripture happening. But that's what this thing is about, bro. That's what, that's what we're studying, man. So just uh, let's continue on to this. We'll do the other half next week. And, um, you know, let's continue to be a blessing to each other, build each other up, and whoever may watch this video. Yeah. And earlier when you was talking about how you try to live your life to persuade other, to other like your family members and friends to do like the whole Christianity thing, it's working. Because like, let's say like a year or two after I met you, I was like seeing the way you was moving. I was like, nah, he moving different, but like in a good way. And one thing, like, I really admire about you is, like, how you're easily able to, like, switch your mood. And that's something, like, I really, I was like, how he do that? Like, especially, like, like if we're in church, we could be vibrant, just making jokes, cracking up. But as soon we talk, as soon, like, prayer comes up, it's like, I just believe like, how? Like, I always be like, how? Like, it's not, it don't take you, it's not like, ah. Like, the Bible says, it's not like that. It's like. I don't know how you do it, but like you easily like switch that and like I I wanna I wanna be able to learn that. And like I don't hey, know how you do that. But like is, I, I don't know how you do that. And then after, hard, man. you go right back to like the whole bubbly stuff. I just like, <laughs> like, oh my, like, like, like I just feel like how it's God. It's just my if it's my it's, 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 so it's my reverence for God, my respect for God, and it's also understanding that my, I have a relationship with God. So, like, God made me. Like, if I got this funny bone in my body, God did that. I, listen, right? I can't, I can't God, sometimes, I, like, when you have a relationship with God, you realize who he really is. Like, God makes, God makes the Kevin Hearts for a reason. Laughter is medicine, right? God, God makes the, the, the people who are tender hearted and passionate for people like, like that, like he makes that trait of moms that know how to like talk to you and, and, and nurture you. And I, it's just, that's God, it's all God, bro. So me going from zero from, from a hundred down to zero, so I could do my thing with God and then come back up to a hundred so I can hang out. That's just, it's all a part of who God is in me. So you know, it's not something you would learn have to do, learn how to do. It's just how God programmed you. <laughs> Keep sticking there, bro. You'll see. Stick in there. Trust my words. Stick in there. It took me a while to do that. Like, because, like, once my energy is up there, I got to wait to bring my energy down. Like, it, it takes it's like, probably, like, a minute or two for me to, like, bring my energy down. Yeah, nah, I hear you. That's just the way I am. But yeah, I gotta. Don't worry, we'll, we'll we'll keep going, man. So, um, I gotta I gotta head out. Right? <clears throat> yes, yeah, and I. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, I'm gonna wrap, wrap up in prayer. Then I'll, then, I'll yeah, you do your thing. So, Spirit of the Living God, we thank you for visiting us today. As your word says, when two or three are gathered in your name, Lord, there you are in the midst. And truly, you were here today. We thank you for giving us understanding of what it is that you were telling Nicodemus. We pray, Lord God, that as we continue on to life, and Lord God, and as you may lift us up here on earth, Lord God, and bring us into new titles and new leadership positions and, 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 and new celebrations, Father, I pray that we would always remain humble before you. That we'll never be too big, Lord God, to come down to the Lord. We'll be, never be too big to, to give back to the needy. We'll never be too big to intentionally spend time with you. We'll never be too big, Lord God, for you to use us. Father, we pray, Lord God, that you, as you have, we have accepted the baptism by water, Lord God, that we even now are asking you, seeking after you for the baptism of your spirit, Father God. Thank you for calling us out of those the darkness and into your light. Thank you for working on our hearts that we may receive the truth, Lord God. 
May you continue to work on us, Lord God. Truly, we declare and decree today, Lord God, we put it into the atmosphere that we receive you as our Lord and Savior. We thank you for what you've done on Calvary. We thank you for the cross. We thank you even now for the resurrection power. Continue to work on the new man, Lord God. Continue to make us new, sharpen us, break us down, build us back up, and mold us into the sons, Lord God, and the daughters that you want us to be, Father God. We thank you. May we be the light, Lord God, that someone needs to see today, that they too would want to worship you. Truly, we ask that you be glorified because of this recording, and that we continue to sharpen each other brother to brother. We bless your name. We magnify you. We honor you today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Keep coming along every Saturday with us to dwell more in these scriptures, to learn new things. I'm learning new things myself. I'm pretty sure Red Jew is learning new things ourselves. Because we don't know everything that the Bible says. We're not going to know everything. But as you keep on going and you keep on learning, it helps to just build your relationship. And that's what we're trying to do. If you share this video with anybody, a friend, a cousin, your auntie, your uncle, Whoever you may think just needed, just share it with them and come back next week Saturday with another one of these videos. And see you guys. Peace from me and Reddit Gio.